Martin asked me if I would bring um, a radio home this evening to do a short piece on, and I can't walk past the Sun SDR2 DX. It ticks every single box possible for me because I don't like too much clutter on my desk in that I can't clear away if I want to. I mean, because I draw, I, I paint, and I do a lot of digital art. Um, I build electronic projects and um, prototype things and just generally work at my desk. So I, sometimes, you know, when I'm laying out sort of paper or something, I like a lot of space. So something like the Sun SDR2 would be perfect for me. Um, and the really nice thing with this is it, it will go into a server cabinet and it will sit on like a server shelf or whatever. With a small Raspberry Pi um, remote sort of server, you can access it from all over the world. It's The software is really, really good. It's lightweight, it's contemporary, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's very sort of like, um, how can I put it, ergonomic. <laughs> it's intuitive, it really is fantastic. Um, software for you know just general sort of use and in my opinion it's kind of one of the best um, easy to use sort of software everything is just well thought out and the other thing as well to remember that um, Roman and the, and the guys and, and Vasily and all the guys there the engineers and everything at uh, uh, Expert Electronics they, they are so so approachable if I have any troubles, they've not once told me to, you know, uh, be quiet because I'm being too silly. Um, but no matter how how daft my questions are, that I've always got a fairly respectful answer. And I've said before, you know, with, with uh, it's always either my fault, it's their fault, let's get it sorted. Um, but it's it's always there's always a solution around the corner and they're very willing to jump on and have a look and all that sort of stuff they're just brilliant it's a good company to deal with um and i've had some issues with this particular unit in in the past and um, with the with the software so there were a few quirks with the software within two days i had new firmware i had a beta version of the software and it fixed all the issues I, i'm not sure how many other companies will do that um you know, especially that fast. I mean, they'll all, they'll all, you know, give it a go, I'm sure. But um, it's just the attention to detail is, is very, very good. Let's have a little look at the software. Um, you can see here I'm actually running um, FT8 uh, in the corner. Now, I quite like things, the digital modes. I like PSK31 and FT8 because it's quiet. I can turn the sound off. Um, it can sit there just doing stuff while I'm fiddle farting around doing whatever I like and it, it just does its thing. But I've hooked this up with a free piece of software that gives me the, the virtual audio cable thing. It's a bit of a learning curve, I will agree, in, in the initial stages. Um, and I think these are probably intend, uh, intended for maybe the, the more advanced kind of user more than the, the beginner. However, if if you are of the of the mindset where you know a, a small challenge getting this working doesn't phase you, then this is a perfect perfect unit. The initial setup means you know you've got to set up a little IP address. You've got to try and change the IP address to a free IP address on your system. Um, but it's all well set out in the instructions and it is doable. Once you've done it once. It's a doddle, you know exactly what you're doing, but it's just a, a new experience. Um, the software itself is pretty easy and um, fantastic to use. There's a lot of information under this options um, button. You've got all of the um, all of the stuff that you need to, to go so you know in the initial stages you'll be in in this sort of window you'll be setting out the new ip address and f discovering the the um, the unit and all that sort of stuff and you can then set um, a few of the power correction things here as well so you, if you're driving an amplifier and you need to get the maximum power in it only needs to be 20 watts you can do all of that sort of stuff in here so everything is kind of rubber stamped before it even goes out the out the, the end of the radio um, what else can you do on it um, 
sound card here. Um, again, you can set this for whatever you want. You got, you know, sound one, sound card two, and uh, and uh, and one or one and two. VAC is what I'm using at the moment um, on channel one, and that's doing the FT8, um, which is um, again, it's just a simple program. It's an open source program that I downloaded. Very very um, it's free. It's not, not a big deal. The display, you can change um, quite a lot about the display here. It is um, setting out for the meter, whether or not you want it RMS or peak. Um, or you can set it to display both. Um, on the main window here, you've got some title text and you can change whatever you like here. There's, there's a few things you can change there. Um, and if you've got a 4K display, it even does 4K and it does look awesome. Um, here you've got a little bit of control over the FFT sort of size and that will give you, it will change just how granular the waterfall is. Um, here you can set the waterfall to monochrome, you can set it to rainbow, you can set it to a uh, custom so you can then, if you want to, you can bring it out and make it all pink if you want or make it all yellow or I don't know, purple, whatever you want you can change it. Um, you can then save each of those modes in a, in a user um, uh, mode there. If you've got a flickery display, you can turn to remove the flicker. However, it does blur the sort of display just a little bit. It makes it look a bit funny. But here you can control the speed of the waterfall. Here you can control the grid. You can turn it on and off. You can change the color, any color you want. You can have it bright orange if you want. There you go, have it nice and orange. Um, you can do all sorts of things, like change the color of the filters. You can change the background, you can have bubbles, you can have a forest, anything. Um, or you can put in a user photograph as well, and I did actually put one of me in there, but no one liked it, I don't know why. Um, indicators, oh, we've done that one. And what else we got there? Cat control, it emulates the TS480. This is the e-coder. E you can program the e-coder up to do whatever you need to. Um, I've actually got this running on a Shuttle Express, which we also sell. They're really, really cheap. Um, and you can get that to do the fine tuning if you want. It's a cheap option of doing it until you can um, get yourself into an e-coder because the e-coders are quite good. Um, here you can actually set up whichever um, program and stuff you want to launch with it. So if you've got CW Skimmer or if you've got some kind of login program, every time you, you start SDR, um, this uh, Sun SDR DX uh, software, then it will start up another program, like a login program or something like that. Expert Sync, never used it, don't know what it is. CW Skimmer, um, again, this is a, a CW um, decoding and encoding program. Um, and you can get it to do all sorts of things with the uh, CW server or CW skimmer server. You can set up shortcuts. You can do quite a lot in there. We just um, basically select and then press the key you want it to be. IQ recorder, so you can recue the IQ data. Um, transceiver control interface, never used it. Don't know what it is. Um, spot settings, again, if that floats your boat, you can play with that. Um, you can set all the spots and stuff up. And um, that pretty much concludes the, the the menu. There are a few other things in there that you can um, get working and play with and do all sorts of things. And in fact, um, there are some of the buttons and stuff are actually here. You can actually select the, the buttons on, on this sort of menu. Um, you can control the RF power here. Um, oh, sorry, not the. Oh, this is the received RF. You can you can control the drive power, which is the actual RF out. Um, and you can set the maximum tuning power um, and you can set your mic gain. But here you can also choose whichever mic you want to use. So for instance, at the moment I'm using the, um, the, the HM12, which is going into mic two port. So I can select mic two. If I want to use my uh, PC microphone, I can use my PR40. Um, you can do all sorts, or you can just use a plain old Turtle Beach Gamers headset, which is what I used for a long, long time with the, um, I, um, when I was using the little SDR sort of 20 watt one. Um, and yeah, it works really, really well. I, I, I can't, I can't grumble. Um, it's fantastic. It does HF six meters um, and it also does two meters, all mode. So, and it only does 10 watts on two meters, but a little amplifier and you can sort of get it up to sort of 30 or 100 watts without too much sort of trouble. And that's perfect for me. Um, 
really because I only talk to local nets and that sort of stuff. Um, I think I think we've we've pretty much summed it up. If you need to know anything more, drop us a um, drop us an email at support at hamradio.co.uk, or you can give the sales guys a call on uh, 0345 230599. Um, they'd be happy to talk you through these sort of things. And if you've got anything you know that you want to know, do drop me an email at the support at uh, hamradio.co.uk email. Ask what it is you need to know, and what I'll do is I'll get on to the factory and, and work it out. They also have a very, very good user forum as well, which is well worth joining and uh, jumping in on, especially if you're an owner of one of these. I think that basically sums it up. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon.